Hi everyone, my name is Rory and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will discuss the best YouTube studio gear for beginners. If you're thinking of starting a landscape photography channel, a gear review channel, vlog channel, whatever it is, this video will help you decide what gear you need to create quality content on a budget. This video will be structured into three groups of gear, lighting, audio, and then video and camera gear. And don't worry if you don't get your studio perfect the first time, just get started as you will keep changing and finding better ways to do things. So don't worry if you don't have it perfect at the start. And I want to mention as well, there are links to practically everything I discussed today down below in the description. So if you want to learn more, go and check them out down below. All right, well, let's get started on what I think is one of the most important topics, and that is lighting. The first product I'm gonna talk about is the Aperture MC RGB LED light. Now, this little panel is a really great item for you to have, whether you're shooting in the studio or outside, or as a fill light if you want to add some more light to a different direction of your face, or as a backlight like I have in the wall here. That green is from the aperture light that I'm using. And it's also great as a outdoor light if you're vlogging or filming before sunrise or after sunset and it's dark, you're able to put this on your camera and light up your face so you can be seen. And it's great as you can adjust the hue, you can also adjust the saturation and the intensity or the bright and it's got a whole bunch of different colors that you can choose from, which is awesome. It also has a whole bunch of special effects and all of these can be controlled from the Sidus app. And I'll show a couple of those to you now, such as lightning, or fireworks or police car. It comes in this little carry bag and it also comes with a diffuser. So that will make the light a bit softer and a USB-C charger. And I think because of the brightness and the colors that it has, rechargeable battery, the diffuser that comes with it, it's really great for vlogging or studio work. Next up, if you're looking for some colored LEDs for your studio, I do recommend these ones from Ikea. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. I think it's Tradfree. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna butcher that pronunciation. But these have up to nine different colors. You can adjust the brightness and the color and a separate purchase you can get with it is this remote. Now the remote is what allows you to turn the lights on and off. So I can turn off my lights in the background with this remote or turn them on and I can adjust the color with this as well. And the price for these bulbs ranges from 19 Australian dollars to $29 depending on what you get and the remote is about $19. But it's a really nice buy if you have some simple lamps and you want to add some color in the background in different places. It doesn't have as many colors as the Aperture but it's quite an affordable option and you can adjust multiple bulbs with the same controller, which is super handy as well. And next is a really big one, very important if you're gonna be doing in the studio, talking headshots like this, or if you wanna do portrait photography or product photography, you need to light up something in the foreground. And that is my studio light, which I have here. I use a Niwa dimmable bicolor 660 LED video light. And this Niwa light is called 660 as it has 330 white beads and 330 yellow LED beads. And you're able to adjust the color temperature temperature from 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. And my one has a panel at the back, which allows me to manually adjust the brightness of both the white and the yellow temperature there. It can take batteries, but I just have mine plugged in. It comes with a charging cable, a carrying case, a white diffuser panel that slides in, but I really recommend just to buy a soft box like I am using as it really helps provide a softer light and it's not as harsh as the white diffusing panel that it has. So I do recommend pick up a soft box uh, with it. They're about $30 more or less, depending on the size of the light that you get. And I purchased mine for about $110 and that was without the stand at the time and without the softbox, but if you buy a pack of two of these lights, you get it with the stand for about less than $280. So that's with the stands included. It's with the diffusing panel, the lights, the barn doors, and the charger. So a really good price if you pick up this two pack. And if you look at some other brands of studio lights, they can go up into the thousands of dollars. So for what this can do for the price, it's really good. You're looking at about $120 per light and stand. It's a really good deal. And next, we're gonna talk about a topic which I think is really important when you're making your YouTube videos, and that is audio. I do apologize if you can hear some background noise whilst we're on the topic of audio, as someone near me is doing construction. So, sorry about that. I'm gonna provide two options here. A cheaper option, but still good quality, and a more expensive option, and it's great quality. Now, even more expensive options, but we're not gonna go into those because this is more about a budget. First of all, the cheaper, better option. I have two recommendations here, and the first one is the Rode Video Micro. Recommended by so 
many YouTubers. And there are other brands as well out there that produce a very similar small shotgun mic like this guy here. This is such a good microphone for the price. I think it goes for like $70. It comes with this windshield as well, the dead cat. Uh, makes for a great quality audio if you're outside and it's quite windy. And the audio from the video micro is surprisingly good, especially if you're close to the microphone, which you generally want to be. It produces some pretty clear and some pretty bassy audio. And if you're able to edit it as well, it can produce some great audio. For the price, I think this is a must have. And the second mic I want to talk about in the cheaper but could option is the Rode Smart Lav. Now the Rode Smart Lav Plus is a lavalier mic or a lapel mic. This one I use with my phone. The connection on it works with your mobile device. Of course, with Apple, I have to use the <laughs> adapter, which is included with your phone. So I just plugged that into my phone. I use the Rode Audio Reporter app, I think it's called, and I record my audio to that. I did buy these windshields separately as I'm often shooting with windy locations, so that's good, but it does come with a little pop filter. And the audio from this is great. Reason being, it's always close to you. Let's go to Rory in the field to explain more. So I've brought you guys to my local woodlands just to prove to you why the Rode Lav Mic is such a great option. So right now the camera has the Rode Video Mic NTG on it, and when I'm standing here, the audio is pretty good. You can hear me quite clearly. But look what happens when I move away from the camera. So now I'm further away from the camera, speaking at the same level, you can't really hear me as well. But when I'm back here, you can hear me a lot clearer, and the audio sounds a lot crisper. So now I'm using the audio from the Rode Lav Mic, the Smart Lav. What do you think about this audio quality? I think it sounds pretty crisp and clear, right? And it's a much more affordable option than the Rode Video Mic NTG, which is what you heard just before. Now, the reason why this Smart Lav is such a great option is when I'm standing here, I sound clear to you and the audio is nice and crisp. But for landscape photography vlogs, maybe you want to walk around in the composition and walk around into the scene. Well, look what happens. When I'm standing here, I sound like this. And when I'm all the way over here, away from the camera, I still sound super clear and it's synced up perfectly with the video. This is a really great affordable option. If you want something where you're able to walk around and you want a hands-free audio option, this is a great option if you wanna be walking around in the environment and still get great audio. So I reckon this is a really good option if you're often vlogging outside and you're not always by the camera or if you wanna get consistent audio. So if you wanted to get better audio and up the game a little bit or you're doing a lot of video work and audio work, I would recommend to invest in the Rode Video mic NTG. This is an on camera shotgun mic, but what's so great about this microphone is you can use it on your cameras, you can also use it on your mobile device like your phone, or you can use it on your computer. So you can use it on practically any device that you own and get professional quality audio. It has an inbuilt rechargeable battery by USB-C and it's also got a auto power on off depending on the camera. So you don't need to worry about leaving it on and running out of battery. And it has an adjustable Rykoat Lyre shocking mount which allows you to slide the microphone forward and back. So if you're holding the camera up to your eye at the EVF and you don't want the microphone to poke you in the head, you're able to slide the microphone forward. Or if you're using a wide angle lens and you worry that the microphone is showing in the shot, you can slide the microphone back a little bit as well. And the audio on this is great. And there's a lot of things that you can adjust to make it right, depending on the situation that you're shooting in. So the Rode VideoMic NTG is currently what I'm using at the moment. It has a built-in preamp as well. So if you're having any issues with preamp noise um, from your camera, this may be a good option to counteract that. So that's the audio I use and what I would recommend to you. If you're just starting out and you're on a budget, I would say pick up the Rode Video Micro if you're always in front of the camera. If you're out and about and moving around, I would recommend to get a Rode Lav Mic. Those two together is less than $140, but if you want to invest in something a little bit better and get better audio quality, the Video Mic NTG is an exceptional microphone. Now onto the third group of gear that you need for your YouTube channel, and that is camera or video gear. I'm gonna go over three options here. A cheaper option, a medium option, still quite affordable, and a more expensive option here. Now the cheapest option, um, and what I did use at the start, was actually very simple, my iPhone. 
Everyone has a smartphone nowadays, practically everyone. And these things are exceptional. The video footage is really great. They can shoot 4K. They've got pretty good stabilization as well. You can connect up microphones just like these or use a lav mic and get some great audio and great video. And you don't have to go out and buy a separate camera. So there's no excuse to get started. You can use your phone. Now, another affordable option to get started, I would recommend the Canon M50. The Canon M50 is a really good, affordable and reliable option if you're wanting to do vlogging or in-studio work like this. It has a fully articulating screen so you can see yourself whilst you're filming. Its stabilization is pretty good and its autofocus is pretty good as well. And the kit lens that it comes with is pretty versatile. So don't overlook the Canon M50 if you're starting out your channel. And that goes for less than a thousand dollars in the kit. But if you're wanting to do better video work, maybe you're wanting to shoot 4K 60 or 10 bit, or you're wanting to do some better video work, being able to grade your own footage, then maybe you want to get a more expensive camera. And I'm not gonna go to the point of the Sony A7S III. Those things are $5,000 plus, and yes, you get what you pay for. A good option for video work is the Fuji X-T4. And that's what I'm shooting on at the moment. The Fuji X-T4's focus is not as good as Canon or Sony, but for stuff like this, it's pretty reliable. It has in-body stabilization, which is very, very good. It can shoot 4K 60, you can grade your own footage at 10 bit. If you're wanting to get better quality video, the X-T4 is a great option for vloggers and people wanting to do some more video work. I'm gonna provide another option, and that is if you're just doing outdoors, walk and talk, vlog style video, I would recommend getting something like the DJI Pocket, which is lightweight, it's priced similar to the Canon M50, it has some pretty cool features. It can shoot 4K. You can adjust the angle of where you're filming. It's super stable for walk and talk as well. Um, so quite a good option if you're doing a lot of handheld vlogging. So something you may need if you're doing a lot of video work, uh, especially outdoors in bright conditions, is a variable ND filter. Now, why do you need a variable ND filter for video? Well, if your settings are fixed and you cannot adjust your camera settings anymore to reduce the light that's coming in, you need an ND filter to be able to adjust the brightness so you're not overexposing your footage. Anyway, we'll go to Rory in the field to show why. Okay, and this is something else I wanted to talk to you about and why the variable ND is so important for video work outside or in the studio. And that is right now I'm shooting an F-Log and the ISO minimum for this is 640. What that means is it's letting in a lot more light than if I was shooting at 160 or 100 ISO. And if it's too bright and I don't wanna adjust my aperture to reduce the light coming in, and I can't change the shutter speed because, for example, right now I'm shooting at 4K, 25p, and the shutter speed is 1 50th of a second, perfect. Now, if it's still overexposed, that's where the variable ND comes in handy. If my settings can't be adjusted anymore, or I don't wanna adjust them anymore to reduce the amount of light coming in, and it's still overexposed, a variable ND is perfect for video work. So right now I am overexposed. I'm gonna put the KNF variable ND on, and it will go from this to this, so it's much better exposed. So this is where the variable ND comes in handy. And if you're shooting and changing light, instead of adjusting your settings, you can just change the ND. If the sun comes out and it gets too bright, or if the sun goes behind some clouds, you can reduce the neutral density effect. So variable ND is really, really great for video work. KNF sent me this variable ND filter, and I must admit, it is perfect if you're looking to get into video work. It's very affordable. The build quality is great. It comes with this nice pouch and you're able to adjust it up to just less than nine stops, which is plenty for video work. The build quality is really nice. It has this little handle here so you can adjust it where you want to go. So I think it's a really good option, an affordable option if you are going to do a lot of video work and you want to make sure you get the shot right. Don't overlook a variable ND filter. If you want to learn more about this, go and check out the link down below. And if you're in Australia, there is a code you can get a bit of a discount off of this. But if not, check it out anyway. It's an affordable, good quality variable ND filter. Another thing I use for my video work, for my vlog camera, if I'm shooting myself walking around in a scene, explaining a composition or getting B-roll is a tripod. And for my film camera, I use the Manfrotto Compact Action Tripod, which as you can see is quite a small tripod. It's not large at all, but it can still go to about 155 centimeters. So high enough. It's very light. I think it's like 1.2 kilos. So this tripod, can hold up to 1.5 kilos, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's enough for what I need. My Fuji X-T4 and the 10 to 24 mil lens with the microphone is about a kilo, so I've got plenty of room there. It has this adjustable ball head here, 
where, uh, which is pretty handy for panning and video work. And I find that this is quite a sturdy and easy to use tripod. It's light and it's really affordable for less than $100. This is a great pickup if you just want a tripod for your vlog camera. Now, finally, is this little guy I've picked up recently. This is the small rig quarter inch hot shoe mount. So this little guy has a ball head and it allows you to connect it to your camera's hot shoe and you're able to connect anything that takes a quarter inch screw. So I use this for my aperture light. I screw it on and I can connect it to the top of my camera, which means if I'm vlogging or if I'm in front of the camera and it's dark, I can light up my face or whatever I'm filming. So I find this super handy and I got this for like $5. You can get a set of two for like $11. Pretty good quality, small, lightweight, and very handy if you want to connect things like lights or displays to the top of your camera so you can see yourself. Pick up one of these, they're nice and affordable and very handy. Well, that is it for this video. I hope it has been useful for you. If you use any of these, I'd be interested to know, so let me know down below. Or if there's anything new that you've learned or things that you may pick up, also comment down below. Let me know what you found interesting. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this helps you with your YouTube gear or your YouTube studio. Thank you once again for all the support. And if you're new, don't forget to hit subscribe for some landscape photography vlogs, gear videos, and landscape photography tips and tricks. And if you're interested in any of these products, check out the links down below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in my next video.